The Puerto Rico fad system is in its infancy, but is essentially analogous to the Hawaiian fad system. In the Hawaiian Islands, dozens of fish aggregating devices were deployed in the late 70s. The program, which benefits recreational fishers, continues today. Over in the Caribbean Sea, during June of 2015, the Marine Ecology Division of the Puerto Rico Department of Natural Environmental Resources deployed anchored fads off San Juan in conjunction with the Yegata Azul Foundation. To date, there have been 10 fads deployed from Vega Baja to Fajardo, and there are plans to deploy more. These fads are the same design as those in Hawaii. They consist of a large steel buoy with a bunch of chain, floating and sinking nylon rope, and are moored in 2,000 to 3,000 feet of water. And they're set up in a linear array covering roughly 60 miles of coastline off the north coast of Puerto Rico. The fads are about 5.2 miles apart and between 2.5 and 4.8 miles off the shelf break, and really centered around the mouth of San Juan Bay and El Moro, an area with a very high concentration of sport fishing vessels around the island. Sport fishing is huge in Puerto Rico, especially out of San Juan and off of beautiful El Moro. And because of this, Puerto Rico DNER using sport fish restoration funds funded the FAD system with the objective to facilitate recreational fishing opportunities and help anglers increase their catch and reduce time and fuel spent searching for fish. Currently, the success of the FAD program is being quantified through four research components beginning with catch success. Initially, this component began with an online survey that was constantly circulated to many fishermen, and within the first nine months of the program, we were able to get 80 vessels to submit 348 surveys to give an interesting baseline catch composition showing that dolphin fish dominated the catch. This component has evolved into working with the top boats that submitted surveys and using Pelagic Data System vessel trackers to log their catch and effort both near and away from the fads. Currently, we have 14 boats participating, but that number should increase soon. The second research component is fish movements. We are catching, tagging, and releasing dolphin fish and wahoo, and really any other opportunistically caught species. We are using pole and troll techniques and dip netting the fish. Here, we work to dip net this wahoo, which can be difficult, but we were able to bring it on board to be tagged. We successfully externally tag and release this fish with an acoustic transmitter and got a pretty cool depth and temperature profile in our acoustic array. During the first year of the program, we set out hydrophones on the fats. In the future, we'll be setting out more. We're using Vemco V16 acoustic tags and wildlife computer mark and report tags to investigate site fidelity, movements between fads, and dispersal patterns. This component is also ongoing. The third research component is underwater visual surveys. We are jumping off boats and conducting standardized scuba diving surveys within 100 meters of the fads. We are mainly documenting the abundant size and diversity of species close to the fads and interestingly have documented many juvenile silky sharks. This component is also ongoing. The fourth research component is vessel activity surveys. This is really our first full scientific study that is currently in review. This series of images gives you a look at what we did. We essentially took time-lapse cameras and strapped them to the fads to record videos. We started by putting cameras out on fad F and then D and B and left them to record for as long as the batteries lasted which was roughly about three weeks. Here is a zoomed in view of the fad cam. The camera is placed at the base of the fad. This image shows you where FAD F, D, and B are in the array. These FADs are very different locations in terms of proximity to ports and distance from shore. We were able to get interesting imagery such as this recreational fishing vessel trolling by the FADs. You can clearly see the riggers, long and short, and flat lines off the transom. We analyzed this imagery both in terms of space and time. We were able to characterize 158 unique vessels which vary between recreational, charter, and commercial fishing sectors, such as this known commercial fishing vessel or this known charter. We were also able to characterize spear fishing activity or recreational activity such as this vessel that did a lot of hand lining near the fads. Fad research is not new by any means to the Caribbean basin. There's been some excellent work done by researchers in the French West Indies on fad, fish, and fishery dynamics. 
off Casa de Campo in Punta Cana, there's really only been non-technical literature published. And recently, a report was put out on a snapshot view of Haitian commercial fad use. And there is likely a program beginning in the Caymans. But with all these studies and fad systems, participation of both recreational and commercial fishing sectors are lacking, which is important to get adequate data to grasp the performance of the fads and determine sectoral use. This is what we're doing in Puerto Rico, working with fishermen from around the island, and we need your help. If you are interested in participating in this research, or providing a tax-deductible donation to continue this research, please visit the Beyond Our Shores website and click Donate. Beyond Our Shores is a U.S. and Puerto Rico registered nonprofit that is dedicated to the enhancement and conservation of marine fisheries and ocean habitats and the coastal communities they support. Donations made to Beyond Our Shores can ensure that research continues in the PR FAD system to be used to assess the performance of the FADs and understand the impact the FADs have on local businesses and the regional economy.